name is Amanda and welcome to part 5 in my Quilt Along With Me series. In this video I'm going to be showing you the way that I like to make my binding as well as how I like to attach it to my quilts. Now because there are measurement and cutting instructions in this step I have included a pattern sheet in this video so if you want to check that out there is a link down below and it will take you to my blog where you can easily find the link and print out the info sheet. So there's a lot to get through in part five, so let's get straight into it. And the first thing that we need to do after we've finished quilting our quilt is to square it up. So the way that I like to do this is I just simply take a long cutting ruler and place it alongside the edge of my quilt top. I ensure the edge and the ruler are as straight as possible, and I carefully cut the edge off using my rotary blade. By doing this, I'm getting rid of all of the unwanted threads left over from my quilting, as well as creating a straight, clean edge that will make sewing on the binding a whole lot easier. And once I've trimmed down that first edge, I simply go around all of the other edges of the quilt doing the exact same thing. So now that our quilt is nice and squared up and the edges are all fresh and clean, it is time to make our binding. So there are two different types of binding that you can choose to make. You can do a proper binding, which is called a bias binding, where you cut all of your strips on the bias of the fabric. This type of binding is also known as a crosswise binding, but this time around I'm going to be doing the cheetah's version type of binding and it is known as a lengthwise binding or a straight grain binding. So this is just simply when you're cutting your binding strips from selvage to selvage on the fabric. Now to be honest the only time when I would actually make the effort to make a true bias binding or a crosswise binding is when I'm doing a quilt with edges. You know those type of ones that have like scalloped edges? For those types of quilts you'll definitely need a binding that will stretch and that's what you get when you make bias binding. But because this quilt and the majority of the quilts that I make don't have any sort of curves around the edges, I just stick to a really basic straight grain binding. And so with that, this is the way that I like to make my own binding. With my fabric freshly pressed, I fold it in half, selvage edges together, and then fold it in half again so that it's easier to cut. With a ruler and blade, I'll trim off the rough edge from the right and then proceed to cut seven two and a half inch strips. So I'm just going to pause it there and tell you how I came to the magic number of seven two and a half inch strips. Now the way that I'm going to explain it, I'm going to be using metric measurements because that's the way that I'm able to work it out in my head. So the width of the fabric that I'm cutting my binding strips from is just a little bit over a meter. So because I'm cutting my strips from selvage to selvage, if I cut seven of them, when I sew all of those strips together end to end, I will end up with a binding that's over seven meters long. And because the length of our quilt edges are a little bit under one and a half, I times that by four, which gives you six. So that's six meters. And then I always cut one extra two and a half inch strip just to make sure that I have a binding that will be long enough to cover the whole sort of edge of the quilt. Now I have no idea whether I've explained that right because I've stopped and started and tried it so many times to figure out how to explain that to you. But if I have lost you, check out the pattern sheet and I will have it all sort of written out a whole lot better than what I've just explained it, but yeah. So I guess in short, I've cut seven strips that will create a seven meter long binding, which will definitely cover our six and a little bit um, length around our quilt. So yeah. <sighs> oh gosh. Right, so let's move on from that confusing topic. Once all of our seven strips have been cut, it is now time to sew them together end to end. And the way that I like to sew them together is I sort of sew the strips on an angle so that when I open them out, you sort of have that faux sort of angled seam that most bias bindings have. It's just a little sort of cheat that makes people think that you've sewn proper bias binding when you really haven't. So to do this, I take two strips and place the ends together, right sides facing with the selvage of one pointing up and the selvage of the other pointing to the left. With selvages overhanging, I then sew a diagonal line down the center so that when I open up the strips, it will make one long continuous binding strip. 
Now before we press the binding in half, we need to cut off the little selvage triangles that have now been created when the binding strips were joined together. Now when I was doing this part, I totally forgot to press the record button and I did not get any of the footage that I thought I was capturing when I was doing this step. So you might have to sort of just imagine it in your head for me doing it. But for this step, all I simply did was trim down the seam to a rough quarter inch using fabric scissors. Thus, getting rid of the selvage edge overhang we made when piecing the strips together. So the last bit of binding prep that we need to do is press this big long strip that we've now sewn together in half. And here is just how I simply do this. So first I cut off the selvage edge from one end using fabric scissors. Then with a hot steamy iron I fold this end over about half an inch and press it in place. This is the end that I will start with when I begin to sew it onto the quilt. And then from here I carefully press the binding in half, wrong sides facing. When I reach a seam join, I open it up using my fingers first, then press it flat into place with the iron. I then continue on folding and pressing the binding in half until I've reached the end. And now that our binding has been made, it is now time to sew it onto our quilt. Yes! And when I do this, I like to use my walking foot because I just find that it feeds the quilt through a lot better than if I was using just a normal foot. And I guess in some way you still are kind of quilting the quilt, so a walking foot will just make the whole process a whole lot easier. The threads that I'm using are just exactly the same threads that I used when I'm quilting. I've got the same colour for the backing in the bobbin and then a white on the top. Where you choose to start sewing on your binding is completely up to you. You can choose any edge that you like. I usually like to start along the edge that will eventually become the bottom of the quilt. I don't know why, it's just the way that I like to do it, I don't know. So here are the steps that I take when I sew on the binding to my quilt. I start off by placing the folded end I made to the binding alongside the edge of the quilt, leaving about 2 inches behind the walking foot. With the outside of the foot placed along the edge of the quilt and the rough edge of the binding, I carefully and patiently sew it into place. When it comes to the corners, I mitre them. To do this, I simply keep sewing until there's about a quarter inch left to sew before I come to the end of the edge. I make a small back stitch and remove the quilt from the machine. I then turn it around to the next edge that will be sewn. I take the binding in my right hand and fold it back on itself at a 45 degree angle, ensuring that the tip of the fold is flush with the corner edge of the quilt. Once I'm happy with the angle, I'll fold the binding back down over the corner leaving a straight fold along the top edge. The rough edge of the binding should fall flush with the quilting edge. Place the quilt and binding back under the machined foot, make a small back stitch and continue sewing on the binding. When I make my way back to where I began, I stop at about 4 inches away from the start of the binding. Then using fabric scissors, I cut off the excess binding, leaving a 3 inch tail to tuck into the beginning end. Once I'm happy with the placement, I sew over the ending joins, making a small back stitch once I reach the stitching that I began with. Then I remove the quilt from the sewing machine. Next, using binding clips, I fold the binding over to the back and clip it into place. When I get to the corners, I trim off the threads and then fold the binding up over the corner and clip the nearest edge. Then I fold the corner edges over, one on top of the other, to make a mitered corner. I clip this into place and carry on folding and clipping the rest of the binding edge. And with that brings us to our last step which is to slip stitch the binding to the back of the quilt. Now there are some very clever quilters out there who are able to finish their binding by doing it on the machine. I don't really like to do that. I like this step where I'm able to just sit down and chill and put some hand sewing into my quilt. This is my favourite favorite step. This is what I make quilts for, to be able to have just this time to sit with this almost finished quilt and just finish it by hand. I just, I absolutely love it. So when I'm doing this step, I always use a good quality thread and of course for me it's Gudeman and I use a thread that's closely matched with either the quilt backing or the colour of the binding. The other tools that I use when I am sewing on my binding is I just use a normal number 7 embroidery needle. I find that that's a really good needle for pretty much anything. And then I also use a thimble on my thumb which is 
this one here. The technical name for this one, because it's worn on the thumb, is called a thumble. I just find having this on my thumb really, really helpful to push the needle through all of the layers that I'm putting my needle through. And it just also just saves from injury, you know. So the technique that I like to use when I hand stitch the binding to the back of my quilt is as follows. First, starting on any side of the quilt, I bury the knot on my thread under the binding. Then I proceed to sew a slip stitch type of stitch in between the binding and the quilt backing, bringing both surfaces together, hiding the raw edge of the quilt. When I come to the end of my thread, the way I finish and secure the stitch is by taking a small stitch under the binding and making a loop with the thread. I pull the needle through the loop, creating a small knot. Then I plunge the needle into the binding, bringing it up along the edge. Then I simply snip the thread off, leaving the tail buried safely in the fold of the binding edge. I then continue to sew down the rest of the binding in the same way until I've come back around to where I first started. And then after that, my quilt has successfully been Binded! Yeah! Now technically at this stage your quilt should be finished. Congratulations if it is, well done. But there is still one more step that we need to do until we can really say that the quilt is finished and that is to attach a quilt label. And that's what I'm going to be doing in the final installation to this series. Part 6 I will be showing you how to attach a quilt label. So of course I hope that you join me for that when it is released. Now just like every other step that I have gone through in this series, I want to encourage you to make and sew on your binding in the way that you know best. If you know a different way to the way that I do it and would like to do it that way, then go for it. I am always more than happy for you to just use this as a guide, as inspiration or anything. That's totally fine with me. Now before I say goodbye don't forget to have a look at the pattern sheet if you're a little unsure about the things that I've gone through in this video and of course please keep sharing your blocks and your quilt tops and your quilting with me. I always 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 love seeing the stuff that you make. All of the links to where you can find me and send me things is down in the description box as well. So as always thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you another time very very soon. Bye! Hello, my name is Amanda and welcome to part 4 in my Quilt Along With Me series. If you've been sewing along with me, we are now up to the stage where we are quilting our quilt. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the steps that I like to take when I'm setting up my machine and my space. 